Hi, I'm Ian Charnis, and today I'm going to show you how to- Oh, no, 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 no! Count to something else! This all got started when I was getting ready for some competitive winter picnicking, and I happened to meet, I want to say, an amateur bird watcher? The crow flies south for the winter. Well, technically crows are a partially migratory <coughs> Well, let's get this over with. Oh, on Bolestrana Kajdaras. I started to suspect he left with the wrong briefcase, because my sandwich was gone. Look, narrator, I'll follow this plot twist of yours, but I was pretty hungry. Don't worry, I ordered you a pizza. You know what to do next, right? Right. First, I cut some PVC pipe and painted them with this glow-in-the-dark paint. Then I put on a protective suit and took this super clickbaity thumbnail image so you would click on the video. But it's not total clickbait because we really are going to make a DIY nuclear generator with glowing radioactive tubes. Let's get to it. But first, we have to remember what a nuclear generator is. This is a nuclear power plant. It uses radioactive uranium rods that get so hot, they boil water, which makes steam, which turns a turbine that generates electricity the same way it has since 1880. Simple, right? But what does radioactive mean? Why do the uranium rods get so hot? Well, some elements have unstable isotopes that are radioactive. Let's look at carbon. Carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. That's your standard off-the-shelf carbon. But a tiny percentage of the Earth's carbon has extra neutrons, like this chonky boy here, who has two extra neutrons. You don't like having those extra neutrons, do you? No. So what does it do? This carbon atom is ready to evolve. Here's what it does. Once in a while, one of those neutrons will split into a proton and an electron. And the atom spits out that electron, which scientists call a beta particle for job security reasons. Anyway, back to our atom, which now has seven protons and seven neutrons, which means it's evolved into nitrogen, the next element in the periodic table. Pretty cool, right? We're gonna use those electrons that the atoms spit out to make electricity, but we're gonna need a lot more electrons, so we're not gonna go with carbon. We're gonna use this a radioactive hydrogen gas called tritium, which apparently anybody can buy in any quantities? Tritium is a chonky boy <clears throat> isotope of hydrogen, which has two extra neutrons. Every once in a while, one of those neutrons will split into a proton and an electron. Hey. Yes, and an antineutrino, I know. And the atom will spit out that electron as it evolves into helium the funniest gas on the periodic table. That electron, <clears throat> beta particle, will then hit a phosphorus-based compound that lines the inside of those glass vials, causing that phosphor to glow, just like how old TV tubes used to work. None of the electrons can actually penetrate the glass and escape the tubes, so this is pretty safe. Unless you chew on the vials and breathe in the gas? Our challenge will be to harness the power in that nuclear generator. Fortunately, I have a secret device that converts light into electricity. It's called a solar cell. I tested out different solar cell chemistries to find one that produces the most power at low light levels. I also bought all of the colors of tritium vials to see which one was best picked up by the solar cell. So I bought a bunch of these and made a sandwich with the tritium vials in the middle and solar cells on both sides. And there you go, your own nuclear generator that uses radiation to make electricity. And just how much electricity can it make? Well, how much? At its maximum power point, our nuclear generator is making a whopping 1.5 microwatts. That's 1.5 millionths of a watt. What are we gonna do with that? This is a hair dryer. It uses 1800 watts of electricity. So I would need 1.2 billion of my nuclear generators to actually power this thing. That's not gonna happen. This is where other YouTubers called it quits. Probably because they have a life and better things to do with their time. Nerd Rage made an amazing video about this, but he ran out of time before he could figure out a way to do something useful with the energy. That's where I come in. My goal is to find a way for our nuclear generator to power a Nintendo Game Boy. Now, it turns out an actual Game Boy uses almost a million microwatts, which is way too much. So I bought a bunch of cheap knockoffs from the dollar store and found one that only uses about a thousand microwatts. That's still more power than our nuclear generator can make, but it's in the range where maybe we can find a way to store enough energy over time to play Tetris for a while. And that's the real engineering challenge of this project. How can I store microwatts of energy? Batteries leak energy faster than I can charge them. The energy would just dissipate too quickly and we'd never get any saved up. Thus began my quest for an energy storage device with ultra low leakage. Would this capacitor work? Nope. How about a supercapacitor? Oh no. <laughs> How about this polyester film capacitor? 
5,000 second time constant. Nope. What I'd really like is for a future Ian to time travel back here and just give me the answer. I really thought that might work. Whoa. Yeah, that's me. You, from the future. I traveled 73 years in the past to warn you about something. Yeah, what is it? Stuffed crust pizza. It's not gonna be around forever. You gotta take advantage of it. I gotta go. Can you believe Moses has never been to a rave? Yeah, but what about... I really thought he was just gonna have the answer. Oh, post-production Ian, can you find a spot in the video where I know the answer and just put it... Oh yeah, I gotcha. The answer was something called thin film solid state batteries. They only leak 2% per year. That's like nothing. If you've never heard of these, you're not alone. They're incredibly rare, and it took me weeks to even find some. What's next? I need to design a circuit board to attach these to our nuclear generator. It turns out soldering these thin film batteries is super difficult because the leads are hidden beneath the part where a soldering iron can't reach. I had to make a stencil to put solder paste onto the circuit board and then position the parts to within 14 thousandths of an inch. The professional way to do this is to use a robot to place the parts and then use an x-ray to verify it's good but I don't have either of those things, so I just have to play this game in hard mode. To finish up, I just put these on a hot plate to melt the solder. Then we just stick on our nuclear generator, make it cool, and put this on the back of our knockoff Game Boy. And there you go, a nuclear powered Game Boy. Now we just need to let the nuclear generator charge up the thin film batteries. I calculated that one week of charging should get us about 10 minutes of playtime. While that was charging, I played around with the glow in the dark paint from the opening scene. Remember the glowing tubes? I discovered you could draw on it using an ultraviolet laser pointer. My drawing skills clearly haven't evolved beyond middle school, but it felt pretty cool to paint with light. You can also make stencils and get better looking results. Go on, clicking that button feels real good. That's as good as cleaning it. <laughs> so it's been a week, our solid state batteries have been charging, and I think this will work. <laughs> I'm pretty nervous to try this. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to wait another week to test again and wait another week to test again, but hopefully it works. I'm gonna point out there's no batteries. All the power is coming from our nuclear generator. All right, you ready? Please, 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 please work. What? <laughs> yes, it's working. It's working. It worked briefly. I saw it working for a good four seconds and then it stopped working. Ooh, it's debug time. After a week of debugging, I discovered the solid state batteries weren't holding a charge. I think it was just a bad batch, but I couldn't find any replacements. All I could find were these other solid state batteries, which are even smaller and even harder to solder. So I designed a new circuit board, made a new solder paste stencil, positioned the new parts to within nine thousandths of an inch. That's smaller than Abraham Lincoln's lips. Then I melted the solder and charged it up for a whole two months this time to make sure we really save up some energy. Okay, it's been two months. If this thing can't last a minute, then the video's kaput. We're setting the bar at one minute of nuclear powered Game Boy time. Woo! <laughs> I'm nervous. Start the timer, turn on the game. We're gonna select Tetris and start. Come on, don't die on me. Yes! <laughs> it actually lasted a whole hour. So just before we raffle this off, I want to put your mind at ease about radiation safety. Lots of things are slightly radioactive. Bricks, bananas, even you. If you take a Geiger counter and point it at some granite, it's actually radioactive enough to just barely trigger the sensor. Don't worry, it will not hurt you, and the nuclear generator measured the same amount. This is nothing like the radiation that comes from, say, uranium ore. Yeah, you can buy uranium ore. You're just not allowed to refine it or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission puts you on their naughty list. Now, onto the raffle. It's the part of the video you've been waiting for, your chance to win this nuclear-powered Game Boy. Look down below for a link to the raffle. Tickets are only $1, and it all goes to help a charity working to help kids living near the Chernobyl disaster. So, if you like helping kids, and you want to own the world's only portable nuclear-powered video game system, click the link below and enter the raffle so this can be yours. Follow me on social media to see who wins. If you like that, why not subscribe and check out one of my other videos.